1960. Uh, the Washington Archaeological Society were focused on the, uh, uh, the perishable finds that were right down at the base of the bank. It was not, however, just on the beach. Um, uh, because the water levels varied and because the Snoqualmie is uh, subject to a lot of seasonal flooding, um, cofferdams were built on the side, uh, sometimes using plywood, uh, and a pump was brought to lower the water level. Um, in these excavations, I remember we had a, a distinct post hole. Uh, the post was probably uh, uh, 9 to 12 inches in diameter, right through uh, a, a plated uh, basket, which had been flattened through there. Wow. Adjacent to that, there were about three more large baskets. Huh. And uh, it was surmised that uh, this was evidence uh, of a possible fish weir in this uh, neck of the river. Huh. And the baskets would have to do, of course, with the, the processing and procurement of uh, the fishery. Huh. Uh, we found a lot of pebbles in that too, which had been wrapped with uh, cherry bark. If you found the pebbles, you'd say they were a plain old river rock. But uh, with the uh, um, uh, the willow wife uh, snapped over a loop and then a cross pattern over the stone. Uh, you had uh, a net weight that uh, uh, was confirmation of the, of the fishing activity here. Uh, also, there was a fish hook, uh, a wooden fish hook that was a very elegant uh, sort of S-shaped form, traditional uh, north coast. By facing uh, essentially what was the first wet site that had come to the attention of Washington archaeologists, we didn't know how to treat it. Uh, and uh, for ideas, uh, it was fortuitous, but we had uh, the fact that uh, uh, Dr. Giddings, uh, later of Brown University, um, happened to be at the University of Washington giving a lecture. And so uh, he was cornered by society members and asked the same question you ask, how do you approach uh, a wet site? And uh, his research work was uh, in the Arctic. And of course there you're dealing with uh, permafrost and a lot of preservation uh, problems, mm -hmm. even more challenging. And uh, uh, it's primarily uh, after listening to uh, Dr. Giddings that the society decided to prepare a uh, National Science Foundation grant proposal, which they did. And uh, they submitted this with the idea of securing the funding to look into the problems of uh, what kinds of uh, chemical stabilization is necessary uh, to preserve the, uh, the perishables, uh, what can we do to get better control working in a wet environment, uh, how, what kinds of specializations are necessary to record um, uh, features uh, in the wet environment that uh, are being extracted piece at a time. How do you put the composite together? Um, there are several methodological problems that uh, uh, were solved, I think, in large part by later discoveries of wet sites uh, in the Northwest, uh, examples of which would be the uh, 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 University of Washington's Highway Salvage Archaeology Program up at Conway. Uh, when the Interstate 5 went through uh, at a depth of about 8 feet uh, in a wet area, uh, they too found huge uh, baskets uh, similar uh, to the, the baskets found here and uh, functionally very similar too. Uh, additionally, uh, Dale Crows uh, working at Washington State University's uh, work out at the Hoko River uh, discovered uh, uh, wet materials. Uh, and Dr. Doherty's work at Cape Alava. And so when you were excavating the basketry, you would see it on the surface and start to kind of spray down. And then how would you stop for the day and then cover it up? Or how, how uh, if we found basketry, we wouldn't leave it. Uh, so the uh, uh, invariably we would try to recover. But very early on, um, the problem of dealing with wet materials and stabilizing them once they were removed uh, became apparent. There was one wooden piece, I remember this long, uh, which uh, we recovered. And after two weeks, it was half that size. And after a month, it had disappeared. It just shriveled up and went away. Basically, it was uh, uh, turkey baster kinds of uh, water uh, to clear the mud once it had been identified with the trowel. Lots of cordage knots, uh, 
you know what it is. Yeah. Was, but here, uh, it was basically a subsistence procurement, and it was a, uh, a fishing station, and so they were basically used to haul fish to and fro. Uh, and the uh, uh, equipment necessary for uh, for setting the fish weir up. Uh, why it is that these baskets were left when they were done is uh, another question. Uh, is it that the water came up? Or was it a flood? Uh, did they discard it? Uh, we're not sure. But the, the place of discard is essentially the site of the fish. There's a, a functional connection of some sort.